ಸಂಪ್ರೋಕ್ತೋಜೀವಾಖ್ಯಾತಮುಚ್ಯಾತ್ಮನೇ ಪುಲ್ಲಿಂಗ ಸ್ತ್ರೀಲಿಂಗ ನಪುಂಸಕಲಿಂಗ ಶಬ್ದ ಸಮ ಪ್ರೋನೌನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ರಿಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ನಾವು ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಸಂಧಿ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಓವರ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಸಮ್ ಸಂಧಿ ಕಾರ್ಯ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಿ ಸ್ಥಾನಾಸ್ ಸ್ಥಾನಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಲೆಟರ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಚಾರ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ which gives the sthana so ka varga ka varga ka kha ga ga gnya hakara akara and akara have the kanta sthana because uh, the pronunciation sthana means the place from where the pronunciation happens where the air hits from the vocal cords the when when you are uh, uh, uttering something that time where the air is kind of blocked or constricted that place uh, where it originates the sound originates that is called as the sthana so throat throat area is kantha ka kha ga gha gnya hakara and akara akara these vowels they have the sthana as kantha the uh, cha varga is the what is called as a talu just behind the cha 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 where you just behind the just above the uh, above and behind the teeth the above the teeth that's the palate and that's where you touch the tongue for the pronunciation to happen ch ch j j ny so uh, the pancham the fifth of the class of all classes you have to be careful in pronouncing it you have to nasalize that as well so kh kh ga ga ny so you say the uh, something like the third letter of the class with a nasalization you will get the fifth of the class so ch ch j j ny ಯಕಾರ ಶಕಾರ ಇಕಾರ ಔರ್ ಈಕಾರ ದೀರ್ಘ ದ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ತಾಲು ಸೊ ತಾಲವ್ಯ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದಿ ತಾಲವ್ಯ ಲೆಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಶಂಕರ ಶಕಾರ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ತಾಲವ್ಯ ಶಕಾರ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಟಂಗ್ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೆಸೆಸರಿಲಿ ಟಚ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಶೋನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಎ ವರ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಎ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ the effort meaning the prayatna so by here anta prayatna the internal or the external effort needed to pronounce that is in the uh, is mentioned horizontally here so what what is said is that contacted means these ka varga the varga varga letters all the ka varga cha varga ta varga ta varga and pa varga letters the tongue touches the sthana or uh, because in uh, ka varga the tongue is already touching the throat that's where the tongue uh, joins the so the, the the there there is a contact you cannot remove the contact similarly when you uh, pronounce the cha varga there is a contact of the tongue at the palate but what you see here the, this this area here slightly contacted slightly open or open that is uh, the sparsha how is the sparsha of the tongue so there is a slight contact and the throat is slightly open the mouth is slightly open or completely open that is how you will get the vowels and the sibilants completely when the mouth is completely open at the kantha the kantha is completely open you get akara or akara similarly all all the vowels are when you open uh, the mouth completely then only you will get the all the vowels but when you have slightly open uh, the mouth is slightly open and you uh, that's the prayatna then you get the this hard or soft uh, conference aspirates and sibilants so uh, shakara shakara sakara etc so that's how you read the chart then the ta varga is the murdhanya murdhanya meaning the roof the tongue touches the roof of the mouth similarly refa uh, the shanmukh shakara and r r the 
the vowels ru and r that's where the tongue touches now it can be completely touching or slightly touching based on whether it's a varga letter or not a varga letter dantya ta varga is dantya tatha dadana then lakara sakara and rikara labials which means the uh, the ostya ostya is the pakara pakara bakara bakara makara pa pha ba ba ma va u and u so this is how you read the chart and why it is important is based on the sthana the proximity of the two letters in sthana and prayatna sthana prayatna that is how the sandhi karya happens when there is a, uh, a rule is ordained which says that this is a replacement for when these two letters come together then the uh, if if there are multiple letters and the ordained rule then which letter will take the replacement uh, uh, which letter will replace that is identified by the uh, proximity of sthana and prayatna between the letters between the sthana between the sthani meaning that which will will be replaced and that which is ordained as a replacement now uh, this is just a brief introduction to that those who are interested can go through the chart and the rules uh, we'll look through the rules only briefly so that we uh, uh, we know how to make and what kind of letters are involved in the sandhi so for that we have to know another thing which is the uh, maheshwara sutra to know what short forms are used like ach or hal when we say ach or hal how do you guess ach means a vowel and hal means a consonant how do you get that so that we see through the maheshwara sutra this sutra uh, in the tradition is considered these 14 sutras are considered ha to have origin uh, have their origin in the uh, shiva's damru when parni maharshi was not able to understand vyakarana and he was teased by his uh, colleagues or his uh, co students that time he did tapasya and uh, bhagwan shiva uh, played his damru and from this his damru these letters have come based on which the entire vyakarana was developed by maharshi uh, parnini so a e un real rik these these are all the uh, letters all the letters are reorganized to make short forms which are called as pratyaharas and based on those uh, short forms the sutras are made vyakarana sutras and that's how we'll understand the adesha which is adesha meaning a rule ordaining a particular replacement and uh, and such but for our sandhi karya we'll need to know what is ach what is uh, jash what is hal so uh, a brief introduction to that so for that we have to know how short forms are made although we do not know all short forms we have to know uh, what they mean when somebody mentions Uh, in in the class, if I mention something, this is the adesha. Then at least we can go back and have a look as to which is which are the uh, replacements. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So a e un real rik a ong a e ouch. These are the uh, first four sutras, which which uh, collectively stand for the entire set of vowels. A to this chakara chakara in the end which is uh, a consonant this consonant or a e un in every sutra the last consonant is not not the part of the letter which are mentioned so a e un stands for a akara ikara ukara and there uh, uh, the dirghas also dirghas or plutas so a a a all these are included in akara so a e un if i want to talk about a e un a akara ikara ukara or a complete a meaning a akara 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 ikara 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 and so on then i just have to say un this akara the first letter and the last letter which is called an it letter which will be uh, which is subject to lopa lopa as in which undergoes elision that and that which is not included in the when the rule is formed then un means akara ikara ukara so all that I have to mention parini maharshi has to mention is un un means akara ikara ukara so he may say un somewhere which will mean akara ikara ukara it's a short form it's a it's a mnemonic similarly this entire set of uh, vowels is called as you start from a akara and chakara ending with chakara which is an it letter so this first four sutras will be called as ach ach is a pratyahara 
pratyara short form which will include akara ikara ukara rukara rukara actually a it will include a e u uh, when i say a then it uh, includes all its uh, cousins also all its all its uh, siblings also because akara akara and akara all these are included so dirgha pluta are also included but when you say akara then dirgha is not included when akara is mentioned then uh, hasva is not included so ach will include a e u r r a o i and o these are the letters which are all the vowels they are in included similarly if i say ak ak means a e u r and r and h will mean a o i and o h will mean i and o only similarly ang will mean a and o only this is how the short forms are formed further is from the fifth sutra it is hayavarat lan the lakara is nasalized here lan nyamangana nam jhabanj ghada dash jabagada dash khapa chhata ta chhata tau kapai shasasar hal so here also this hakara uh, from the fifth sutra ha to this lakara in the last 14 sutra is hal this is also hal over here but when hal we say hal that time this hal is not talked about this hakara from the fifth sutra and ha from the uh, fifth sutra and la, lakara from the last sutra those are talked about meaning all the letters starting from hakara till lakara which are the consonants so ha ya va ra la nyamangana na and so on another thing to be noted is that in the seventh sutra for example here nyamangana na these are the uh, when you look at the varga the varga letters ka kha ga ga nya cha cha ja ja nya so all these five of the fifth of the class are included so seventh sutra is the fifth of the class uh, letters class consonants the there are five sets of class consonants each having five letters so there are five classes with five class consonants so there are 25 uh, consonants class consonants they are included here varga panchama varga panchama is the seventh sutra meaning the fifth of each of the class this nyakara is the fifth of the cha varga makara is the fifth of the pa varga nyakara is the fifth of the ka varga nakara is the fifth of the uh, ta varga and nakara is the fifth of the ta varga so this is how the fifth of the class includes similarly if you go through this sutra then and analyze or uh, go through the book and see the chart you will see that uh, some pratyaras <coughs> some sutra they cover the particular class letters <coughs> like jhabanj jhakara bhakara then ghakara dhakara dhakara all of these are what these are mahaprana letters where you say j jh b bh uh, so if you look at them then what is it including is that j ch ch j jh p ph b bh so fourth of the class which is a mahaprana letter so when i say jhash this jhakara mahaprana jhakara and shakara murdhanya shakara then you will get jhash is the fourth of the class seven seven sutra is the fifth of the class eight and nine sutras put together are the fourth of the class 10 sutra is the third of the class each of the class third uh, the third uh, letter which occurs in each of the classes is included in the 10 sutra then khapa chhata ta chhata ta if you look at this then kh and then kapai kh ph ch th th chhata ta kapai <coughs> these now 11th sutra if you look at it, what is kha ka kha the second of the class pa pha second of the class so so on and so forth so you analyze them then you will see that there is fifth of the uh, second of the class and something more is included because ch ch t and th these three are the first of the class but 11th to 12 11 and 12 when you put them together khai if you say khai then khai will include the second and the first of the class letters this is how they are reorganized and there is a order in which the, the even in the sutra they are not in the same order that we look at the uh, the classes so ka varga cha varga this is not the order in which the letters are there for various reasons which we may not be able to know completely because we have to know each and every sutra which applies in uh, each circumstance to know why it has ordered in this way uh, the sutra as in the panini sutra which are 4000 in number 
So Parni Maharshi or uh, the way Shiva gave it to Parni Maharshi, this is the shortest way that the, the uh, rules could be formed. Shasasar. So Shasasar, you see, the uh, aspirants and siblings are also managed in this way. Hakara, there is a recurrence. This Hakara and this Hakara, there is a recurrence. Uh, for the same reason that uh, uh, sometimes he wants to exclude Hakara, sometimes he wants to include Hakara. And why I am saying Hakara, Akara, Jakara, all of these, the Akara, except for in the vowels, except for the vowels, when you say, it's from the fifth sutra onwards, Ha, Ya, Va, Ra, the Akara with Hakara. This, this is Hakara plus Akara is Ha, Yakara plus Akara is Ya. Similarly, this Ghakara plus Akara is Gha. But these sutras are talking about only the consonants. The akara in the sutra is only for the pronunciation. Otherwise, you cannot pronounce a consonant without a vowel. No consonant can be pronounced without a vowel. Uh, just like in ka varga, when we say ka varga, the letter is only kakara. Kakara, kakara, gakara. But we you say ka varga, the akara there is only to help pronounce that. But it is only a single consonant, not two letters. Otherwise, ka would be mean two letters, kakara and akara. Similarly here, ha hakara is what is intended in the sutra, a consonant, but ha plus a hakara plus akara is ha and that ha only stands for hakara, akara within that hakara is only uh, within the ha is only for pronunciation, to help aid pronunciation. This is what we have uh, now. Similarly now there can be various short forms, say if a jash is said, the 10th sutra is jash. So jash can be an adesha in a sandhi. When jash is said that, then if ghakara takes jash adesha, then gha will be replaced by j. Ghakara will be replaced by jakara because the, the proximity in sthana and prayatna. This is how we have to check. So say, um, there is a uh, third of the class ordained. So third of the class is ordained, then we have to look at if uh, some letter of the class, class consonant is uh, is the sthani, meaning is that which in the sandhi, when two thing, two letters are pronounced in close proximity, that time there is a sandhi. That time, let's third of the class is the is ordained for both, both put together or only one of the letters which are in the sandhi, which are in close proximity, then we have to analyze as to which uh, class uh, consonant is, which class is, does it belong to. So it belongs to ka varga, then third of the class will be ka, ka, ga, ga will be the adesha. This is how the rules are formed. Anyway, uh, let's go to the, so here the chart uh, explains. So, uh, yeah, she's used these uh, uh, words which I am not comfortable with, diphthongs and things like that. People who are comfortable may uh, go through this. Uh, simple vowels, a, e, u, r, r, these are simple vowels and then she said diphthongs, a, o. Uh, these are, a, kara, o, kara, they, they are dirga. Ekara, Okara, Aikara and Okara are Dirgha, they do not have their Hraswa, there is no Hraswa, Hraswa for Ekara, Okara, Aikara or Aukara. In some technical cases there is a Hraswa identified in the Sutra, but otherwise there is no Hraswa here. semi vowel Hakara is the semi vowel fifth of the class means Nyam, Nyam is the fifth of the class, Jash is the fourth of the class, Jash is the third of the class, Khapa Chata the Chata the Khai and Kapai. So, uh, the Khapa Chattata Chattatao and Kapai, these sutras, those two sutras put together give the second and the first of the class. There is no split in this sutra as second or the first of the class separately. Similarly, sibilants are uh, sh Shal. Shal is the sibilant, but you will see a lot of Shar in the, where Hakara is excluded. When Hakara has to be excluded, uh, the Maharshi will give the Adisha Shar or something. Identify as shar. Shari. Uh, shari means when the when shar letter follows. Anyway, this is just uh, so that we are comfortable uh, with short forms, but I will not use the sutras while mentioning uh, the sandhi karya. Let's look at some of the sandhi rules. So, sandhi, uh, <coughs> when is a sandhi uh, mandatory? Sandhi is mandatory in a compound, in a samasa. In a compound, when two words are, two or more words come together, that makes a compound. In a compound, there the Sandhi is mandatory. You cannot say, say, Rama and Ishwara, you can't say, there is a word Rameshwara. So, Rameshwara, there is a temple, Rameshwara. So, Rameshwara, Rama, 
let's look at this rama if i say sis just a second i think my baraha is not open okay so <coughs> sandhis so if i say ramaha rama the word rama and ishwara if i have to say ramaha and ishwara has two separate words then there is no sandhi there is no sandhi necessary <coughs> in a sentence but if i want to make a compound so in a compound samasa compound sandhi is mandatory mandatory <coughs> so sandhi is mandatory <coughs> in a compound for example ram rama plus ishwara will be rameshwara the akara at the end of uh, the word rama and ikara in the beginning of the word ishwara will form an ekara both are replaced you see a is the adesha a is the sandhi rule a is the replacement for akara and ikara together so you get rameshwara you cannot say rama ishwara and consider that to be a compound it will be, there will be two separate words similarly in a pada a pada as in in a in a quarter no pada mandatory in a pada also pada meaning a quarter quarter of a verse such as geeta geeta verse there also you have to do sandhi so if, 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 if although there are two separate words uh, but they are part of one quarter then a sandhi is mandatory there samasa pada and uh, uh, between a between a prefix and <coughs> and the word and a and a word during a word formation so so when you uh, in a word formation so you know if you prefix between a prefix and the the rest rest of the body rest of the word in a word formation so between a prefix and the rest of the word <coughs> what is called as an anga so uh, the prefix and the rest of the word in a word formation there also it is mandatory so let's say i say um, say um the example would be say a uh, or some say some some plus say um sarga okay say sarga uh, or let's say some um, let's say some some this will become uh, <coughs> anuswara <coughs> some plus sarga will become sam sarga so here this anuswara this anuswara makara becoming anuswara is mandatory here you cannot say sam and sarga separately it has to become an anusarga uh, anuswara samsarga which is geeta etc so these are the places where it's mandatory but it is optional optional in in a sentence in a sentence one may decide to do sandhi or not to do sandhi based on the vivaksha if i have to take a pause somewhere i may i'll not do a sandhi if i want to say something uh, very fast then i have to do a sandhi <coughs> then uh, there are uh, there is a visarga sandhi which is actually a part of the consonant sandhi hal sandhi so hal hal means a consonant and ach means a vowel we have seen this pratyaras so there is a ach sandhi and hal sandhi these are the two categories really but then uh, visarga sandhi although part of hal sandhi is sometimes considered separately and called as visarga sandhi because visarga has a lot of uh, rules governing based on what follows what precedes 
what kind of adesha happens, what kind of replacement happens. Visarga is also called as Visarjani here. There is a chart for Visarga Sandhi. Uh, this is the easiest way to look at um, Sandhi. <coughs> Sorry. Or through practice you will get this Sandhi. Don't uh, go through technicalities. If you don't have enough time, uh, you know, bandwidth, then uh, uh, look at the Sandhis on case by case basis. If you have enough time, then go through this chart and try to analyze what happens. So here, for example, Purva and Paraha. Purva para means Purva means the earlier letter. Para means the later letter. So when this Purva and Para come together, that time there is a Sandhi. In the situations uh, just mentioned. So when Sandhi happens, and these are in pronunciation, they are not in writ, writ. they are not in, because everything is, this is a uh, language which is spoken. And when you are speaking it very fast, then that time uh, the Sandhi has to be made. So Purva, Purva and Para has a Sandhi. Now look at this Purva letter is Akara, Akara, Ich. Ich means A, E, Un, Ri, Ruk, A, Om, I, Ouch. So E will include Ikara, E. E will include E, U, Ri, R, A, O, I and O. This is what Ich means. This Ich will include all those letters. A, when A, A precedes Purva. A is A precedes and Para is A. Between A and A, what is the Sandhi? As in, what is the Sandhi means? Now this is a Visarga Sandhi. A and A precedes and A follows, but Visarga is sandwiching this. Visarga is in between. So it is like Ramaha, Ramaha Agachati. So this Sandhi will be, or here she is given Shivoham. So uh, this is a better example. So, Shivoham. Shivaha Aham. So the Visarga Sandhi is what? Here. Actually, Visarga Sandhi we could uh, come back to later because it is a little complicated. But anyway, since the chart is there, I'll mention the uh, the examples at least. Uh, and uh, uh, in this book, there are some uh, examples given, and the rule is itself rule itself takes its name for easy um, uh, e for for an as an aid to help us in our memory. So we we call it Shivoham Sandhi, for example. This is a Shivoham Sandhi. Shivaha Aham. So, Shivaha, Aham, what, what this means is this is a Visarga Sandhi meaning this Ha, this Visarga, uh, Shiva, Shivaha that you say, this Visarga is preceded, Purva is Akara, A uh, precedes and what follows is also Akara because Aham, this Akara here. So, what this is is actually Shiv, A, uh, Visarga, Visarga and there is an Akara. So the Sandhi is, bit, is this is the Sandhi. This is the Sandhi here. A, Visarga and A, A. Then what happens to this Visarga? This Visarga becomes O. It's a, it's a longer rule, but then what you see is Shivaha Aham equal to Shivoham. Equal to Shivoham. And Shivoham or there is a, the way it is written, you get Shivo and Aham. Hum. This Akara, you see, there is an O, O Adesha, you see Shivaha Aham becomes Shivo and this Akara is dropped. This is how, there are multiple rules but end result is Shivoham. So that's why it's called Shivoham Sandhi. Shiva, Shivaha Aham becomes Shivoham. If it is just Shiva without Visarga, it would have been a different Sandhi. So this is a Visarga Sandhi here. And this is how you read the chart, Shivoham. Now, Akara and followed by A or H, it meaning any vowel other than A, the Akara precedes a Visarga which is followed by any vowel except A, a then the Visarga drops. Like Arjunaha Vacha will become Arjuna Vacha. Visarga Lopa. So there is a Visarga Lopa. Arjuna, so it's Arjuna Vacha Sandhi. You can't see the Visarga here. And Arjuna here is not a Sambodhana. It is Arjuna. Ha. Arjuna means Arjuna said. Not hey Arjuna Vacha. It is Arjuna. Ha. Arjuna first case Vacha. Uh, spoke. Spoke thus. So Arjuna Vacha it will become. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. 
then namo namaha sandhi namaha and namaha meaning what the akara precedes then there is a visarga what will that become that will become the, the this hush hush is a consonant now hush is what hayavarat uh, the all the letters varga panch uh, the varga panchama hayavarat lan yamagananam jabanj ghada dash jabagada dash till the third of the class so fifth of the class fourth of the class third of the class ha ya va ra so all these letters put together ha ya va ra and fifth of the class fourth of the third uh, and third of the class that is hash so when hash letter follows hash letter follows you get a uh, namo namaha so okara is the adesha here a plus visarga plus a is o and akara is drop a plus visarga and any vowel except a you will get the a visarga drops a is the adesha and visarga drops basic uh, the um, uh, there is a visarga lopa then o if a this is an example here any of the hash letter follows then you get the the o as the adesha akara c a plus visarga plus hash letter will give you the sandhi as o so namo namaha and you have to see which is replaced here what is replaced is this a ha a plus hash with sandwich with a visarga what is replaced is the visarga visarga is replaced with an o and not only visarga this a, a is also gone now nama nama plus so if you look at this nama difficult to mention without uh, this so nama nama plus visarga there is a namaha visarga and namaha namo namo namaha so namaha namaha this akara so what this is is equal to nam plus a plus visarga and there is a na letter here this is nakara and amaha so i'm just breaking this word the sandhi is between this a visarga and na this nakara is a hash it is a hash letter why is a hash, hash letter because it is the fifth of the class cha cha ja ja na ta 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 sorry ta 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 na that nakara is the fifth of the class which is part of the nyama gana nam which is a part of hash hayavara lan nyama gana nam that nakara it is a part of the hash pratyahara the short form hash from the maheshwara sutra and therefore when hash follows a visarga which is preceded by an akara then both of this this akara and visarga you see it is replaced by okara and you will get namo namaha so namo namaha sandhi if you remember one example then it is easier to form the uh, remember the rule and uh, recall in some circumstances anyway i'll skip this rule we'll see this uh, there, there are a lot of uh, this rule is a little tricky and uh, not needed not seen so much then this ka kha cha cha sha ta tha sha ta tha sa pa pa these are the divisions made and uh, that's how the visarga changes visarga so what is called as jivha mulya jivha mulya means the, the akara visarga and kakara or khakara when this is the sequence then what happens to that visarga how is the pronunciation so you say you don't say duhu kam the, the duhu kam is not the pronounce pronunciation it is dukham so dukham this dukham the the visarga you see how it is pronounced it is like half it is cut down into half dukham that is that that pronunciation of visarga is called jivha mulya the op, this is an optional also sometimes rules are optional but anyway this pronunciation dukha the visarga followed by kakara or khakara that is what is called as jivha mulya similarly you see shakara when followed by shakara rama akara followed by visarga which is followed by shakara shankar shakara what the, it ha- what happens is sorry uh, followed by uh, chak this chakara visarga which is followed by chakara chakara or shakara that becomes shakara so ramascha 
Ramaha Ramaha plus this cha. This Visarga, which is preceded by Akara and followed by Chakara, will become Shakara. So you will get, it will become Shakara, this shak, Shankar Shakara. So you will get Ramascha. This is Sandhi. And so on. I will not go through all these Sandhis. I will just mention Ramashtikate. So Ramaha uh, followed by Takara, Ramaha Tikate will become, the Visarga will become Murdhanya. It will become Ramashtikate. It will become uh, Shakara. The Murdhanya Shakara. And Namahate. Namahate is Namaste. Puna Puna will become. Uh, so punaf punaha that uh, this is the only place where fa fa is pronounced punaf punaha not punaf punaf punaha not punaha punaha punaf punaha this is the only place where you'll hear the uh, the hindi fa uh, the way you say fool uh, in uh, uh, samskrita there is no fa except in this scenario where punaf punaha in chanting you'll say punaf punaha I am not mentioning the option right now and you can go through the chart like for example A, uh, when A is, A is preceding a Visarga and then any of the, the A, A, e, H, basically any vowel or hush letter follows, any vowel or the uh, aspirants or the consonants like the fourth of the class, fifth of the class, fourth of the class and third of the class, any of these letters which are called soft consonants, they follow, any of the letter follows, then Visarga drops. So, Janaha Agachanti is an example. Then Janaha Agachanti will become Jana Agachanti. There is a Visarga Lopa, the Visarga goes away. Similarly, Guna Guneshu, Gunaha Guneshu Vartante. So, Gunaha and Gakara is what? It's parts of Hush. It is a part of hash, hash Pratyahara. Therefore, there is a Visarga Lopa. Gunaha will become Guna. Guna Guneshu. The, when you split this on the, it will be Gunaha Guneshu. Otherwise, Guna has no meaning. You will think that it is uh, Akaranta Strilinga. No, but it is actually not Akaranta Strilinga Prathama Ekochana. It is Akaranta Gunaha Akaranta Pullingaha Prathama Bahuachana. Gunaha it is. So when H, H meaning uh, ika, any vowel except for akara or ika, uh, a, e, un. So in any vowel except a, a meaning a, 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 a and uh, a, 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 dirgha or hraswa except for that when any other vowel precedes, H precedes, meaning e, u, r, r, a or i, o, au any of this precedes a visarga and it is followed by any vowel or hush consonant then then there is a refa adesha refa this rakara also called rakara refa adesha see guruhu adihi is guru radhi guruhu eva guru reva these are the vowels then hush letter bakara is a hush letter guruhu brahma so you say guru brahma not guruhu brahma not guru brahma Guru Brahma, this is a Refa Adesha. And when Refa uh, follows, then there is a Lopa and Dirga. So this this letter, uh, the, this particular Sandhi will skip, since it's, we, we don't see it so many uh, times. We'll skip this. And then the last Sandhi here, Saha or Eshaha. This also is, uh, uh, I mean, this is commonly seen in... Uh, in verses, Saha or Eshaha, these are the exceptions. Only these words, these are particular words, Saha or Eshaha, when uh, Saha Esha uh, will take an Adesha, like Saha Aham, Saha Aham will become Soham. Saha Aham will become Soham. This is the, like the Shivoham, like Shivoham Sandhi, Saha Aham will become Soham. But, Whenever Akara follows, that's the only way Akara follows. Whenever any other vowel or anything else follows, in fact, anything except for Akara when it follows, then the Sandhi is, there is a Visarga Lopa. Saha Eva will become Sa Eva. Sa Purusha, Saha Purusha will become Sa Purusha. Esha Purusha will become Esha Purusha. 
So you have to remember that only when Akara follows the Visarga, which is preceded by this, this word Sa or Esha. So Esha, Sa, these are the only two words when it is, these are followed by Akara, you get Soham or Eshoham, but otherwise you will get the Visarga Lopa. This is not such an important rule, uh, but uh, you will see a lot of cases you will see. Uh, it is not a typo, uh, the Visarga Lopa has happened due to Sandhi. Anyway, I will skip through the examples, go through the examples if, uh, uh, if interested and if time permits, otherwise we will see uh, the Sandhi uh, as and when we go through Tattva Bodha. Let's look at the Ach Sandhi, meaning a vowel Sandhi. Now this is a chart for vowel Sandhi. When two vowels come together, then either the first vowel may be replaced, the second vowel may be replaced or both may be replaced. And what is the replacement? The first may be the replacement, second may be the replacement or a third which is related to the first and second may be the replacement. So these are the uh, possible combinations. Now you see the ach, ach is a a, e, u, r, r, a, o, i and o. So this is how they are mentioned vertically also and horizontally also. A, a, e, e, u, u, r, 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 a, o, i and o. The way they occur in the sutra. Uh, we'll see, look at this chart a little later in the next class and uh, hopefully we'll look at this as well as the uh, Hal Sandhi quickly in one or two classes and then uh, we'll move on to uh, the uh, Panchavritti, the five different ways in which nouns are formed. I'll just quickly go through them uh, and then in another class maybe and then we'll move on to Tattva Bodha. Om Tat Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.